Welcome again to Joe Stunner Boxing. You know, if there's one thing I hate, it's agreeing with Frank Warren. Um, if you've watched the channel before, you'll know that I don't have the highest opinion of Frank Warren in terms of morality and um, necessarily always being uh, truthful. But he did an interview with Seconds Out. Um, Danny Flexen, of course, is always the person that introduced that uh, interviews Frank Warren because they're such good friends and so on and you know we know Frank likes a bit of home cooking but he did say a lot that I agree with about Anthony Joshua he said look this is this is mental this is a psychological thing with Joshua and I've said this before in videos and you know Joshua's 33 uh, people talk about him having a limited amateur background he actually won a silver medal at the world's and gold at the Olympics and so on and so forth. And, you know, he, he has a bigger amateur background than Tyson Fury or Daniel Dubois and Moses Altama or anyone you want to mention. I mean, he's, he's not a novice, is what Warren was saying. And I can't really disagree. I can't really disagree. Look, I know that with a new trainer, you can learn new things, but you can't reinvent the wheel which is what he's trying to do a new trainer will come in especially with someone who's 33 <laughs> and will refine their skills maybe add a few components to it um, and kind of hone the skills that are already there will take you don't throw the baby out with the bathwater as the saying goes you know you, you take everything that's good and you build on that and you you add certain bits and pieces to sort of um, make him even more effective so the problem with Joshua is not that he needs to be like completely reinvented I, mean, I, don't, I just don't see what, what I don't see you could bring in the best trainer in the world and Derek James is a pretty good trainer the apps you could you could you could resurrect some of the greats you know Emmanuel Stewart is, is a good example. He did it with Lennox Lewis. He rebuilt rebuilt Lennox Lewis. Um, and, and more more impressively, I think, um, Vladimir Klitschko, after some horrific knockout losses, he actually he he actually got Klitschko to the point where, you know, they accepted the limitations and he, you know, Klitschko not having a great chin. Um, and Klitschko looked very, very shaky, you know, to, at the, the first few fights with Stewart. Very shaky. I mean, he went on the floor, I think, three times against Samuel Peter and won the fight on points. So he was scared of getting hit. Um, when he was hit, the reaction was, because he lacked confidence, was emphasised. Um, does this ring any bells? Because it does with me as far as Joshua's concerned. But you can take any trainer in history, and if the guy hasn't got confidence, if psychologically he's fractured, he's not going anywhere. And I think this is the case with... Anthony Joshua. Now, can it be rectified? Yes, it can. Although at 33, Joshua probably doesn't have as much time as he once did. Um, you can argue that he's past his prime anyway, you know. <clears throat> um, but let me let me draw a parallel because this is a little bit of personal testimony here. But I, I work with people who who are addicts, okay? Predominantly drug addicts and alcoholics and they have done that lifestyle they have been entrenched in their addiction for years and years and years so it's what they know it's their safety net it's it's um, everything that's familiar it seems like not something they do but something they are so when you're helping these people what you want to emphasize is the long game and that means repetition 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 you replace all the negative destructive behaviours with positive constructive behaviours. But that takes time. It takes time to see the, you know, the fruits of your labour. It might take years. And that is why people who are in recovery and haven't had a drink or taken any drugs for 30 years still go to meetings. It's to keep their guard up. Now, if you draw a parallel between that and a fighter's psyche, a fighter... You can say to him, OK, <clears throat> we need to do this, this and this. And the fighter will go, OK, look, I'm doing this, I'm doing that, I'm doing the other.
but it won't be second nature until they've done it again and again and again and again and again and again and again. Right. Over a period of, say, several years. Then it will seem like second nature. Then it will be like driving a car. You get into your car, so put it on. Where am I going? I'm going over there. Okay. You don't even realise you're changing gear. You're you know, taking the brake off. Whatever. You're looking this way, that way. Rear mirror. You, know, you, don't, you don't think about that because it's just like subconscious almost. Um... And of course, if you're a very, very good driver, you can do things that most other drivers can't do. But but why? Because you've done it again and again and again. Repetitious behaviour creates repetitious behaviour. And that's what that is what Joshua needs. Now, he's only had two fights with Derek James. Derek James and him might gel beautifully. But after two fights, you can't expect miracles. And that is why I think... He needs about another three, at least another 32, but preferably three fights with Derek James. And he needs to constantly work in the gym regarding whatever it is they're working on. It could be, you know, doubling the jab, the body and head and bending at the knees, giving more angles. Whatever it is, they need to work very, very hard in the gym, but they need more time under the lights. Now, I know... Joshua is, talk, is talked about as being the next uh, next one is going to be Deontay Wilder. I think that is a terrible gamble at best. Because Wilder, even though he has limited skills, and Joshua is f- a far more talented boxer than Wilder, even though he has tremendous power, Wilder, um, he's technically limited and he's been very, very inactive. Very inactive. But... I wouldn't make this him against Joshua as anything other than a 50-50 fight at best, at best. Because Wilder has two proven qualities. Well, number one is obviously his power. We know all about that. But he is a tremendously courageous, determined and confident, almost to the point of delusion, fighter. And sometimes delusion can get you a long way. If you really believe something, you know, you'll do anything. You'll walk through fire. You'll die. Some people believe all sorts of nonsensical religious things. And they'll die for it. And they they do die for it. Why do you think suicide bombers blow themselves up? Because they believe that they're going to end up with, you know, whatever it is, 50 virgins. And they won't have anything to use on the virgins. But you know what I'm saying? (laughs) But they'll do it. You know, self-belief can take you a long, 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 long way. And Wilder has it, and his determination and his courage, as he showed in the third fight, in particular against Fury, when he he had to be not flat to be beaten, was absolutely tremendous, absolutely tremendous. So I think Wilder and Joshua as a next fight is a mistake for Joshua, a potential mistake, because if he does get in trouble against Wilder, and Wilder can sniff blood, he's he's a killer, he'll come straight at Joshua. Will Joshua be able to stay calm and and ride out the storm? We already know that he second guesses himself tremendously. I mean, you can see that from his performances. And he likes to have absolute instruction from the corner. He almost likes to be told what to do minute by minute. Is he going to survive an onslaught from Wilder, a rampaging, windmilling Wilder? I have my doubts. Now, of course, Wilder would have to hit him. But if you look at Joshua's face after the hellenius fight, bloody nose, blood coming out of his mouth. Strangely enough, hellenius didn't really have a mark on him, (laughs) even though he got flattened. But no, I don't see, I don't fancy Joshua's chances. It's too much of a gamble at best. Um, so yeah. So those are my thoughts. Further thoughts on Anthony Joshua. Leave your comments below, of course. And, um, you know, like the channel. Hit that subscribe button. Like the video. Hit the, you're helping us out. We're nearly at 2,000 subscribers. So if you can help out, that'd be a great, a great favour for us. And it's much appreciated. Okay, tell me what your thoughts are on Anthony Joshua, any further thoughts, and uh, we'll speak again soon. Bye-bye for now.